For 21 years, I've been on various land trust boards and in various organizations, and it's from that standpoint that I want to speak about and speak to board members that are here in the audience and to you as you relate to board members in your organization. Darla asked if I could comment on a few behaviors and attitudes that board members might take in this pressure time that would really contribute to the organization, staying healthy and moving toward its mission. I talked with a couple of EDs, with development people, with board chairs, with board members about this. So what I'm going to say is, to a certain extent, a summation of what they said, but also it has to do with the time that I've spent on a lot of boards. Some of what I'm going to say is a bit counterintuitive. When an organism is under stress, there's a tendency, both psychologically and biologically, to pull back, to withdraw. And it's directly related to uh, what Audrey was saying about what does visualization do. Visualization opens you to potential. If you give in to the stress of a time like this and do not st struggle to stay conscious, what happens is you pull back in and you lose your feelers, you lose your contact, you lose relationship with the people around you, and you can't afford that. And to board members, I would say, do the exact opposite of what, what your body and your mind might be telling you to do. Move in closer, become more involved, and give more time to the organization. And give more money. I'm assuming every board member in here has a job description that the organization has created for you. One of the expectations of board members is that they contribute financially to the organizations. 100% of the board members in organizations should be giving. If you write a check each month for $100 to the organization, make it $125. If you're thinking about giving to the organization through your will, make that concrete and write in that $10,000 or 5% of your estate, or whatever you're intending. As a board member, this is really a time to step up. It can really help the organization. Secondly, talk to staff. Talk to the board president. Talk to other board members. Talk to the ED and listen. Offer to help. This is a time to strengthen the communication, to strengthen relationships to those that you're close to, and as has been said, to the people that support the organization in Circle 1, Circle 2, and so on. It's a time to try to create a tighter knit in the fabric that supports the organization. Number three, if you have a special skill, You've been holding back, you're a board member, you've been sitting there, you've sensed that there, there is something in your background that could contribute to the organization. You have a special interest area. Get involved around that interest now. Show that you care. If your background is in real estate, tremendous contribution can be made from that point of view. If it's in ranching, if it's in business, if you're a park manager, Get involved from the standpoint of that interest and do that now. Know what projects are going on right now in the organization. Know what events are going to happen and then talk to the public about it. You all know that a lot of donations come to the organization out of already established relationships. So if you know the organization and what's going on right now, approach those donors with what you're doing, your enthusiasm, and find out if there's anything that they might be interested in doing for the organization. And I think the trick in that is, even though it's a difficult time, keep your land trust at the forefront of your thoughts. Visualize where you think the organization will be in a year and where you'd like it to be in two. Become a more active advocate, is what I'm saying. And then, this is really the big one, and I think most of us as board members blow it on this one really badly. 
insist on knowing what's going on in the decision-making core of the organization, and particularly around finances. A big part of your job description and part of your responsibility to the organization and to the public trust lies in this area. And we do carry responsibility for the finances. It's where we are legally responsible. So ask questions and then ask them again. Leave board meetings feeling like you know what's going on in the fiscal area. Okay, so I've said five things. I've said don't withdraw, become more involved, talk and listen, step up with special skills, know the details of events and activities so that you can communicate accurately and excitedly with donors insist on knowing the financial area of the organization. Thanks.